All right, so today I want to talk about using square brackets to dynamically create properties inside of objects, or how using square brackets changes the way that property names are interpreted. So I have a simple object right here, and I've got three properties inside of it, A, B, and C. Now I can use any of these three syntaxes. I can use A without the quotation marks, with double quotes, with single quotes, and all three of them are going to work. Now when I save this page, like this, my code linter is going to, or code formatter is going to revert these all to this syntax right here. So it's going to strip off the quotation marks. But it doesn't mean that the other ways were an error. If you're just using Notepad or something like that to write your JavaScript, not that I recommend that, but if that's what you're doing, you will see that all three syntaxes work with or without quotation marks, single or double. It's not going to matter. Even backtick characters you can use as well. So what I want to do here is I want to add a brand new property. And let's say I've built a function that's going to allow me to add properties into my object. Now I've written this as an arrow function. You can write it as a regular function. You can write a function declaration, a function expression. It's not going to change this one bit. But my function is accepting three things. We pass in an object where we want to add the property. I pass in a property name that I want to create and a value for that property. So using this, we would do something like this. We'd say add prop and my object. This is the object that I'm referring to. The property name, well, let's just call it food. That's going to be the name of my property. And the value is going to be cheese. Food's going to go to prop name, cheese going to prop value, and I want to add a property to this object, that's what I'm passing in, called food. Okay, inside of here, we could say obj, that's the variable right here, which is referring to this one. We can say obj dot food. Now, if I was just hard coding this, I could write obj dot food equals cheese. Okay, that's what we're trying to achieve here. Now, I have a variable called prop name. With my square brackets, I can do this. I can use the square brackets to put this string inside of here. If I were to do this with the dot syntax equals prop value, what's going to end up happening if I do both these lines is with the first line, I am actually going to get something here called food, which will have the value cheese. And then there'll be another property created called prop name, and its value will also be cheese. So this one right here, the square brackets, that means it takes the value of the property and uses that as the property name inside this object. That means when you're declaring the object, you can use that same syntax. Let's say I had a variable up here. We'll create a variable called beverage, and we'll set that equal to beer. Now, if I wanted to create a property inside of here called beverage, I can hard code the word beverage, but I can also use that square bracket syntax like this. just like that. So this variable is going to be interpreted here. And what we have done right there at the very end is we have created a new property called beer. And it has the value Corona, just like that. So it's the exact same thing as if I had done this, beer Corona. That's what we're doing here by using the square bracket syntax. So it's just one other way that you can create properties inside of here. You just have to be aware that a variable name, if you put a variable name here, it's the value inside that variable that we want to use. If that's the case, you need to put the square brackets inside of here. If you don't put the square brackets around it, if I just did this, beverage, uh, let's say Heineken, 
like that. What's going to happen here is we've just created a property called beverage and given it the value Heineken like that. So the square brackets inside of here let us dynamically create the property name inside of our objects. All right, I hope that helps you out. Uh, down in the description, there's a copy of this code so you can play around with it and experiment. And as always, thanks for watching.